18th of January 2007 was the day my life changed. I went for my 20 week scan with my husband and my youngest child at that time. We went for a scan expecting to find out what we were going to have, but unfortunately we were told that our baby brain hadn't developed right. Similar to anencephaly. Um, of course we were devastated and it was a cluster of abnormalities that her outcome would not be, the outcome of the baby would not be good prognosis and that most probably she would die even before she was born. So of course again we're absolutely in pieces, devastated, it couldn't cope. Our whole world had just come to it. It'd come to an end because the wee girl I was having. I don't know what was going to be wrong with her, but all I knew was that she was inside me and I could feel her and she was moving and she was growing and she was kicking and the our wings were able to touch her in my stomach and feel her. And we carried on with the pregnancy and we went up to the Royal every couple of weeks. I never ever really get any support in the Royal. They, they just they scanned you and sent you home and told you to come back two weeks later. and. You're sort of just left on your own, you never got any support, you never get any counselling, you never get any, I don't even know, any help from anywhere. The week before she was born and the consultant told me, oh, she's only going to be three pounds, she most probably will be die as soon as she's born. But lo and behold, a week later I gave birth to a seven pound, one ounce baby girl who was absolutely beautiful. She had the six fingers in each hand too, so she had they were her wee, her wee special hands. She had trisomy 13, which was a Pato syndrome, which has extra chromosome 13, and she wasn't compatible with life, and she would die within a matter of hours. And there she came home and the joy that that wee girl brought to this house. She, all our brothers and sisters, she, they got to nurse her, they got to change her, they got to play with her. Every night she was never ever left alone. One of us two was always with her the whole time she was alive in this house. She brought none but joy, none but love. Our whole, whole family, every day, her uncles, her aunts, all our cousins came to this house, everybody shared in the joy of her life, even though it was tainted with the sadness every day we were knew she was going to die and it was just and eventually she died. Thirty three days old at three o'clock on a Friday afternoon. She died in her daddy's arms. I don't understand how it, how the Nolan show can say that these babies are are worthless, that they're 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 nothing, that they're I mean, that was my baby there. How can you say that her wee life was worthless? But since I've watched that Nolan show that night, that's brought every emotion back to me. That my I'm mean, trying to say that my child, because she had fatal abnormalities, wasn't worth a life. She wasn't worth to be a child, to be a daughter, to be a sister. Children are to be loved and to be cherished no matter what's wrong with them, no matter if they're got abnormalities, no matter what. Children have a right to be born. And I just feel so strongly and so passionately that women in my position who have been told that there that there is some sort of abnormality with their child that they need help and support, not to be pushed towards abortion. It's so wrong, so very, very wrong to upset mothers like us who have carried our children, who have loved our children, who, who wanted our children so badly and couldn't have them. It's so wrong to make us feel that we did something wrong, that we, we did wrong to give birth to a child with abnormalities. How dare anyone? How dare anyone say that to me that I did wrong to give birth to a child with abnormalities. 
She was my baby and I loved her. <laughs> my daughter's life. She lived for 33 days. But that was her life. And her life is precious.